The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Rocio from SAGNI. Thank you all so much for joining us on this wonderful, rainy summer afternoon here in New York. And wherever you're from, I hope it's sunnier and nicer than here. Um, today, we have Don Sanders with us. Um, and he's going to show us the five steps to sell 100,000 every month. Um, if you guys have questions during the uh, webinar, please let me know. There is the question box that you guys can type your questions in. I will uh, forward them to Don, and Don will be able to answer them as we go along or at the end of the webinar. Um, again, thank you, Don. And Hi. I'm going to pass everything to you. OK, and hi. Hi. Are we, are we ready? OK. Yeah, we're ready. OK. There you go. Thanks for doing this again, Don. Welcome. Um, uh, hi, it's Don Sanders. Um, I want to thank you all for listening today. And um, I'm going to try and teach you or show you how, for 96 months in a row, my ex-wife and I, uh, three interns and a uh, full-time assistant, sold over $100,000 a month. And I'm not making that up. I have been doing this a long time. And we had a good system in place to be able to sell a good volume. And the key to doing that was we were good at showing particular products. Uh, we did not allow people to push us around. Uh, it means that some people we didn't sell. Uh, I tried to cater towards doing business with people that would um, would pay uh, the margins that we uh, wanted to get, and I think it's hard for a lot of people to walk away from deals because they want to sell make sales that uh, have low profits just to maybe spite their competitor or or whatever whatever reason that might be. But anyway, I want to thank you for being here today, and let me tell you a little bit about me. I've been a distributor for a long time, probably a little bit over 30 years. I would estimate that I've sold maybe 24, 25 million dollars worth of promotional products, maybe more than that. Uh, the key to what I've done, which is a little bit different, is I actually did this to make money. Uh, we averaged 43 percent profit on our orders. That doesn't mean that I made 43 percent of profit on every order. I did not. I had taken some orders at 25 and 30 percent. But to make up for that, we also made 60 and 65% on some orders. And a lot of people always questioned, Don, well, how in the heck did you do that? And the way I would do that is I never uh, passed specials on to people that we sold. I kept the additional profit. Plus, we do a lot of rush orders. And with rush orders, you're taking a big risk. Uh, I would mark those up even more. Uh, we had gotten people that were desperate, so they would almost pay anything we wanted to get their order done. So with that said, we've averaged about that profit, 43%. I write articles for most industry publications. I've done that maybe 250 times. I am a speaker at a lot of the shows. I'm going to be speaking at the ASI show in Chicago um, here uh, next week, and then I'm going to speak at the PPAF show in uh, Florida in May, and I've done that a bunch of times. I've made a couple of films for PBS, which is off the subject, one on Route 66 and the other one on the history of drive-in movie theaters. And I am probably a little different than any webinar presenter you've ever had. Uh, those shoes you're seeing up on that screen, I have 10 pair of those. That's my brand. And I have a sales training website called sellpromoproducts.com. So again, I am a distributor. I don't sell as much as I used to because uh, we don't work our distributorship as much. But I do still sell things uh, on a daily basis. So I'm going to be presenting to you today based on what you do on a daily basis. I am a speaker. I've done some films. And I own a sales training website called sellpromoproducts.com. And I signed that site 12 years ago to help distributors uh, sell more. And there's my uh, logo, uh, my phone, my email, etc. So with that said, let's start here and get going. And please know that I'm not trying to be a know-it-all. I'm not trying to tell you that I know everything. I do not. I am good at this. I know that. But there are people that are better at this than me. There are people on this webinar today that do as good as I do. I just try and pass on some things to you that will help you 
not in an arrogant way, in a way that I'm here to help you. I mean, I wish that there was somebody like me when I started this uh, where I could go to and learn some things. I kind of did it the hard way, but I figured it out, and a lot of people really have a hard time getting into this because they, they really don't know the progression of sales. So the way to do this, or the way that we think that we did it, is we used alternate marketing programs. That means I, I used there are several different ways to, uh, to get customers. I'll go through those just in a little bit. We sold a lot of mega buyers, big companies like the Bombay Company used to be in business. I did all of their marketing. We used to do a lot of stuff for the Ballesters Convention Bureau, most big hospitals in Dallas. About 25% of our business uh, came from referrals. It's not possible to sell the amount that we did based on just selling new orders every day. You would run yourself ragged doing that, so you've got to have a couple of calls every day from somebody who says, you know, Don, I got your name from uh, the Nature Conservancy. We'd like to buy some of the hats like the ones you're selling. I mean, that would always pick me up for the day and make me feel better. If I hadn't sold much that day, getting a nice referral sale would make it uh, a better day than it had been. We, we did not deal with price shoppers. If somebody was shopping our price, I told them to go away. Not in a rude way. I just didn't sell on price. We sold on quality and service and our personality. We made high margins, which I would like to help you do that. Uh, we found secret buyers. I mean, uh, it's not anything secret. I just tried to magnify all the buyers I could at customers that we already had, like the Bob A Company. I was losing their jewelry business for six years until I smartened up and found out who was buying their rings and their custom-made jewelry. And I, for six years, I just let that, buy, that business go down the drain. So I, I can't be critical of any of y'all if y'all are doing that because I got fooled by that for not taking advantage of it for about six years. I was really good at prospecting. We were always doing mailing programs, and I sold, or we sold a lot of prospects based on uh, products that were not based on price. Now, you're looking at a fearful young lady here, and the reason I'm showing you this is people like this have always made me a lot of money. About 80% of the people selling promotional products, I, th I kind of think, have this kind of attitude. They're afraid to go out and see people. They only deal in their comfort zone. They will not sell anybody of a different uh, persuasion. Um, I be political, religious, personality. I, I don't know what to say. They only feel comfortable dealing with people just like them. Uh, I did not do that. We did not do that. We called on all types of people. Uh, I was a member of the Dallas Black Chamber. I was a member of the regular Dallas or the Dallas Chamber. I was a member of the uh, Hispanic Chamber. I was a member of the Asian Chamber. I would reach out and sell people that were, no matter who they were, I would go after them or to try and adapt our selling styles to them. So don't be like this poor lady. She doesn't do, look very happy to me, and she looks like she's. Uh, She's not going to do well. So the first thing to make money is you can't lose money. And I want to talk to you about doing import orders yourself. Do not do that. Please don't try and import your own orders. I, I, I hear on a daily basis through my website horror stories about people who've tried to import their own orders and these things get out of control. They're dealing with people overseas that are not reputable. They're buying products that are not uh, printed with USD, US, US, USDA approved inks, and the worst story I've ever heard, and I just want to tell you this because it'll prove that you don't need to import your own orders, is I had a guy call me almost five or six years ago when Neely was a bag supplier. Uh, Neely was, is not in the industry anymore, but a guy called me and he wanted to place an order for 50,000 tote bags, uh, and I said, well, you should call Neely. I said, Eric Fitchu knows how to do that. I said he can probably broker the order for you. So the guy contacted Neely, and Neely gave him a price. I believe it's dollar eighty a bag, and he sent the guy a written quote. Uh, I believe he faxed it to him. And so about a month later, I contacted Neely, called me, and said, "Well, Don, whatever happened to your friend with the back order?" And I said, "Well, I didn't hear back from him, so I, I thought he placed the order with you." He says, "No, I never heard from him again." And so I called the guy on the phone and I said, well, what was up with that, with that quote you got from uh, Neely? And he says, oh, Don, you know, I really want to thank you. I went on and bought the orders direct. I didn't go through Neely. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, uh, Neely left the import license uh, person's contact on the order, and uh, I didn't have to pay Neely $1.80. I got him for $1.50. I, 
I said, I've made 30 cents more a bag, so I've made uh, an extra 1500 or $2,000 or whatever it is. My math's probably not that sharp right now, but he says, well, I made more money and I went with Neely. And I said, well, I said, I hope that goes good for you. I said, you know, I, I don't know why you called me if you were going to cut us out of the deal. I wasn't very ugly about it, but I didn't think it was the way to do business. And so I just dismissed him. And about two months later, the guy called me frantic. And he just said, Don, I've got to have your help. I need Neely to help me. I need you to help me. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, uh, my bags uh, I've had a problem with them. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, the boat that uh, my bags were on, uh, you know, I've already paid the deposit. I had to pay the full amount for the bag shipped from Shanghai. I think it came out of Shanghai or Hong Kong somewhere. He said, the boat sunk in the harbor and my, uh, my order was on it. And I said, well, what am I supposed to do about it? He says, well, you didn't tell me I had to buy insurance on the shipment. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, I got to read my contract and it was my responsibility to ensure the shipment. Not only was I supposed to pay the freight, but ensure the shipment. I said, well, what do you want me to do? He says, well, you didn't tell me that. And I thought, you, well, I won't say what I thought about him, but the point being is he cut me out, he cut Neely out, he was greedy. He lost about seventy, sixty-five thousand dollars $65,000 on this trying to be cute. So please don't import these orders on you. You're on having distributors all the time, wanting to buy 1,000 pins, 1,000 magnets, and bring these things on themselves. Buy Buy from these sagging suppliers that you use or the sponsors. You know, there's a lot of good suppliers that sponsor sagging the events. You buy from them. Uh, there's a bunch of them. And let them handle these import orders. And please, please, don't try and do that on your own. So that's, that's enough of my importing lecture. But let me show you this slide. This is a Chinese menu. And uh, this is kind of the same way that most distributors operate. They, they run their business like a Chinese restaurant. You look at all those choices there on that menu. Uh, I don't know how you can go in any place like this and actually pick out what you want. Don't make yourself a promotional products distributor that runs their business like a Chinese restaurant. The point being is don't give people too many choices. When you give them choices, they can't make up your mind. If you went in this restaurant and there were only six choices on the menu, you would make your mind up faster than with this many choices. So try and limit the amount of choices you give anybody. You're never going to be able to sell the volume we did. You're never going to be able to sell more than you're selling now if you give people too many choices. Now let me give you an example of that. There's the, there's the header, excuse me, on our website for Don Sanders Marketing. There's my shoe logo. That's the logo that I have up. I'm going to go into this in a minute. But what I'm trying to show you is I have a website from ESP. I'm not pitching ESP over any other site. I'm just saying that's the site that I have. There's a bunch of people that have sites, so I'm not trying to sell their site, but what I'm telling you is on that site, I can pick 10 suppliers to have their header ad up under my logo. So right there, when you click on my website, you'll see a microfiber cloth ad. That's cloth promotion. So that'll, that'll lay up there about three seconds, and about three more seconds, Dooley will come up, you just hang on there, Warwick will come up, and if you just stay on the site for about 40 seconds, you'll get 10 suppliers come up. I just like dealing with Warwick. I like dealing with Dooley. I'm, I, you know, I like dealing with a bunch of suppliers, but I pick the suppliers that can go up there on the front page of my site. The reason being is I am hopeful that if someone comes to my site, they will be attracted to Warwick calendars, Dooley cups, GMG pen, whoever all we have up there on the site because those are suppliers that I know I trust. That doesn't mean that I don't want them to look at other products on the site, but I prefer for them to buy from suppliers that I know. I know Phil, uh, Phil Martin that runs Warwick. I mean, I can call on him. I know Jim connected Dooley, et cetera, et cetera. I know Ari, I know Ari uh, that owns uh, GMG Pen. I, I, I want to deal with people that I know and I can trust. So I'm just trying to tell you, Please limit or try and limit the choices that you see with anybody. Now, you're not going to sell the volume that we sold or you're not going to sell more unless you make yourself unique. I have not had a paper business card in 22 years and will never have a paper business card again. I do not sell printing. I know some of y'all sell printing, so don't think I'm trying to rag on you about selling printing. I am not mature enough to do the proofing that printing requires. So I don't want to fool with it. And the printing uh, margins are not high enough for me. 
So I have used products, promotional products with our logo on them for more than 22 years. So when somebody says, Don, you have your card, the product that I give them is my business card. Here's my show shoe logo for Don Sanders Marketing. Uh, this is the way we branded ourselves. We're unique. It gets me a lot of business. People ask me about my shoes. Some of you all will think, oh, my goodness, I can never wear those shoes. Well, yep, you can. I wear them because it gets me business. I'm out of my comfort zone. I am doing something to get business, just like going back to the scared woman. It scares me to wear my shoes, but I do it because I need to make money. Now, this is my business card. Someone asked me for my card. I take the thing out, unfold it, and it's a six by six fiber opera card. I take their glasses, I take their cell phone, I clean the screen of their cell phone, or I clean their glasses. I fold it back up, I put it back in the pouch, and I say, well, why don't we do some of these with your logo on it? You cannot do that if you are handing out a paper business card, because you don't say, well, let me do your business cards for you because I don't think there's any money in selling 500 or 1,000 business cards. But if I can sell 500 lens cleaning cloths, I sell these for a buck 80, I think they cost me 90 cents, I can make $450. That is why I do this. It makes me unique. I've got a nice shoe logo. I've got a different product. You go up against me with a paper card, anybody's going to think, oh my goodness, the one with a fiber opera card, they're a little more creative. I'm not being critical if you've got a paper card, I'm just trying to help you. So this is an item that we use. Another item I use as my card is a mini jotter. Now Warwick makes these, not pitching Warwick, but this is a pad that comes apart at the front or you pull down the, you pull down the front cover. It's got about 50 sheets of lined paper in it. This is another card that I have, same kind of pitch. I take this out, even with this product, I make it a tech item. I'll take this and I'll say, well, give me your cell phone. I carry rubber bands with me. I will take this pad, put it on the cell phone, and put the rubber band around it and hand it back to them. becomes a note taker for where they're on their cell phone. Now, the chances of them staying together with that rubber band are, are slim and none, but I'm trying to show them that I am more creative than the person they're buying from and I'm giving them another item they can buy. I carry four or five of these things in my pocket all the time. I give them to everybody, same kind of pitch. Let me sell you some of these with your logo on. I sold 11 orders last year of these pads just by bringing that up. I'm trying to impress on you to be unique, have something neat, and something to sell. sell. Now, conversations are key. I always ask open-ended questions. I always ask anyone when I meet them, if I meet them on a new call, if I go into a business that I am not familiar with, first person that approaches me, can you please help me with something? Starts out with a positive response. It will be yes. They're not going to say no. I'm not going to be able to make a sale starting off with a no. I want to start off with a yes. Or I was visiting a client down the street and wanted to see if I could help you with anything. Now, doesn't matter if I had to drive 33 miles across the, the county to see them, I'm going to tell them I was just down the street because I don't want to act like a dog who drove all the way over there to meet with them. I make it feel like, or make them feel like, hey, I was just in the area, thought I'd stop by and see you. I watch for new ads in our local newspapers and in the little community magazines that we get out here, get here. There's a brand new pizza at Royce restaurant that opened over here about two miles from me. I ordered pizza from them the other night. I went in there and I said, listen, you know, I went to pick up my pizza. I didn't have it delivered. I went to pick it up. I went in there and I said, well, you know, I noticed your ad in the paper. I want to get a pizza. And bam, gave them my card, etc. They did not have a doormat. I ended up selling them a doormat from Devon, $280 doormat. Made $140 off of it just because I noticed their ad and I approached them. Now, I deal with people on a personal basis. I do not deal with them on products. I do not deal with them on price. I deal with them personally. I make them my friends. Everybody knows what goes on in my life. I know what goes on in their life. That is the way I keep my competitors away or at bay. These are three, four, five, six pictures that I include in my emails. Like the guy at the left at the top here, he's a waiter. It works for the Golden Steer Steakhouse in 
Las Vegas. I posted that picture on my Facebook account. I had four people contact me saying, Don, when in the heck were you with Robert De Niro? I lied to them and said, oh, I know him really well. I didn't stay with the lie very long. But I put these pictures up. People say, Don, what's going on here? Now, down here at the bottom right, the African-American man in the jacket, he is Yo Gotti, the North Memphis rapper's personal bodyguard. Now, you'd say, Don, why would you include a picture like that? It's because I want people to ask me who that is. I talked to that young man flying from uh, Dallas to Orlando for the ASI Orlando show. He got that coat, those glasses, that headphones off. He had a marketing degree from Florida A&M, the nicest guy in the world. I enjoyed my conversation, had my picture made with him. I know I learned about rapping and who Yo Gotti is, but I didn't know about it. But I ended up selling the guy 300 t-shirts on the airplane, but I posted his picture, and it makes people ask me about who he is. That's how I get interest. Betty and Gracie are my dogs in the car. Back over here on the left, I sponsor a roller derby team. I do that not to date roller derby girls, but every month the roller derby girls have a cocktail or a beer party, and I go there because I meet the sponsors of the roller derby. That is American Airlines, Southwest Airlines, Chase Bank, all sponsor that. I get to go meet their marketing directors. My top right up there, I went down the north rim of the Grand Canyon on a donkey. Now, here's a picture of me when I'm two or three years old with a creepy Santa. This picture I made, I found it in my mother's house. I made 50, no, no, I made 250 copies of this on Walgreens. This was my Christmas holiday card for five years ago. I made this as an email template. I emailed this to all my customers. I bet half of them emailed me back saying, Don, never knew you had hair. Where'd you get the jacket? Or who is the creepy Santa? This was my uh, holiday card. This is another fiber opera cloth. I fold this up with the picture of Santa. I put it in a Warwick traditional uh, holiday card, and I mail it to people. I mail this out, these out uh, at the end of November. I sold six orders of these uh, cloths to my customers who emailed me and said, Don, can we get those in time for the holidays? I'm just trying to impress on you that people buy from us because we are different. I have a nuclear bomb shelter in my backyard built in 1962. It just sits back there. I publicize it. I got it on Fox News. It's in the local papers. Everybody knows that we live, or I live in a house in a nuclear bomb shelter. You might think that's strange, but because of that, I had my house on the Oak Cliff home tour. I had over 1,500 people come through my house in two days. I sat right out there in front of my house and chatted up everybody who came in my house, talked to them about, uh, about why my house is on the tour, about nuclear bomb shelters, and I got three new customers. Here's Betty and Gracie Ann Sanders. This is all my dogs. I know that 99% of y'all have dogs. If you do, I think you're a good person. If you have cats, you're a good person. If you have bad birds, you're a good person. I use my dogs. I chat people up. I have put pictures of these dogs in my emails. Now, to prove that this works, I went down and pitched the Hyatt Hotel with four other suppliers. There were five of us making pitches to their new marketing director, Cynthia Vasquez. I went down, chatted her up, showed her products. I had pretty good products, but I am no better than anybody else at this. But the next day, I sent her an email thanking her for her time including a picture of Betty and Gracie. This is the email. I swear I haven't made this up. This is exactly what she sent me back. I am good. I got two little puppies, so I'm really happy. There are many dachshunds. I knew at this point I had her sold. Four-year period, I sold her over $50,000 worth of products. She has since left, so you can call on the Hyatt Regency in Dallas now. I'm not doing business with anymore, but I got their business because I connected her with dogs. Now, when we go back to the holiday greeting, one of my customers is a financial planner. He's a meeting planner. He emailed me this after he got my card, asked me about the lens cleaning clause for the holiday card. I sold them a thousand of them that they put in their cards. I just went to Cuba. I sent pictures of my Cuban trip posted up on my Facebook. Dennis McGarry is a friend of mine at this company. He likes to talk about Cuba. I'll chat him up about Cuba, I'll email him, but on the back end, I'll try and sell him some t-shirts. I can't tell you enough about personal relationships are the way to do this. 
If you like dogs, if you like gardening, if you like hunting, if you like boating, get chummy with people who like that and they will buy from you and not from people like me. Now, let's talk about regulations and fooling with that. I do not care about Proposition 65. I do not care about any government regulations that have to do with promotional products. The reason being is I don't buy from suppliers who have not already figured that out for me. I know distributors that run around in circles thinking, oh my God, is this product that I've sold toxic? Are these inks government approved? If I buy from Prime, if I buy from Bullet Line, if I buy from Sweda, if I buy from Vision USA, if I buy from American Zebra, Dooley, I don't care who it is, I know they've already figured this out. So I don't spend any time attending seminars, being scared about this. I don't care about regulations because I buy from suppliers that are smart enough that I know that have already taken care of this. So if you don't do your own, own importing, you'll buy from suppliers that are good at this, have been in the industry. I don't even think this is an issue. Now let's talk about eliminating objections. Objections are career killers. I've been able to keep them to a minimum because I don't deal with people that have these three traits. People that are not competent, ones that have little knowledge. A lot of people don't know anything about promotional products. They'll get up on the internet. They'll start looking for competitive products. You'll call them up and they'll say, oh my goodness, you know, I found the product you were giving me online for a cheaper price. Well, there's no doubt about that. You can find anything cheaper. But is that product USDA approved? What type of inks are in that product? Are you going to sell, or, and I just confront people, are you going to buy a product on the internet that you don't even know is safe for your customers? You better buy life insurance policies for them too if you want to kill your customers. I'm not kidding you. I talk to people like that because it is the truth. So to eliminate objections, don't deal with people that have no confidence, little knowledge, are scared to death. A lot of people in marketing are scared today, like these three goos three down here at the bottom. The reason being is there's a lot of consolidation in marketing and a lot of companies. I've dealt with companies that used to have 10 people in marketing. Now they have three. The three people that are doing it can't do the job that the 10 were doing, and so they're scared. They're always scared they're going to lose their job. Stay away from people that are that way. Also, to keep injections in check, always learn the facts. I never proceed on an order before I know these four things. I know that most of the distributors that I deal with do not ask these things. I get about 200 emails a day from distributors asking me questions like, Don, you know, you think you know so much. Uh, I've got a billiard parlor that wants to buy uh, something from me. I'll email them back and say, well, how much do they want to spend and how many do they need? They'll email me back every time and say, I don't know. I didn't ask them that. I'll email somebody, they'll call me up and say, well, I've got something I want to sell a realtor. What do you think? And I'll say, well, what does the realtor want to use it for? Is it a gift for new homeowners? Is it a prospecting gift? I mean, what is it? Never proceed or work on a quote, an order, or anything until you know these questions. If you do, you're wasting your time. I'm not rude about it, but I ask people. I've got to know these things because I can't find the product that will fit you. You don't want to show somebody a $10 product if their budget is $2. You don't want to show somebody a product if they need something in three days. It's like talking about Dooley on the cups. Dooley does cups in one day, all right? They ship out of Memphis. They, they longest, you know, they can get wherever, they can get to New Jersey in three days. They can get to New York three or four days. So, I mean, they can get to Dallas in two days. So if somebody needs something in three days, I talk to them about Dooley Cup just because I know they'll deliver. There are other suppliers that do that, but please, please do not ever proceed on an order to you if you know these things because if the customer has not, if they don't have this information, they're not prepared to buy. They're just shopping. They're just looking. And let's try and stay away from lookers and let's congregate towards buyers. Now, we're pretty good at networking. I belong to a lot of chambers, three chambers. In fact, I go to a lot of mixers. I like the cocktail parties better than the breakfast or the lunches. 
but I do a lot of volunteer work. I do a lot of political work. Pretty apolitical these days. I really don't care. But every time there's an election, I work for a candidate. We I just work for our city councilman who got elected over here, what part of town I live in. I met three new customers while working on that because like-minded people who like Scott Griggs, the congressman, councilman, were working on that campaign. That's how you meet people. You chum them up, get to do business with them. So let's say I'm going to go to a chamber mixer. Uh, the Oak Cliff Chamber is the one that I belong to. They have mixers like uh, once a month, like from 5.30 to 7.30 at different bars. I'll take uh, six or seven of my lens cleaning cloths or six or seven of my notepads. I'll make it a point to talk to 30 people. There's probably 80, 90 of these things. So I'm going to try to have 30 conversations. I'm not going to talk to people about religion. I don't talk to them about politics. I will when I know them, but not up front. I'll just walk up to somebody. I'll introduce myself to them. Uh, I don't even tell them what I do. I'll say, well, what do you do for a living? Uh, uh, they'll say, well, I am a plumber. Uh, I will say, well, do you own the plumbing company? If they say, no, I am just a plumber, I'll say, okay. Well, good luck with that, and I just turn around and go away. I don't do it in a rude way. I just I've got to go to the restaurant and get some wine or something. Because if he's just a plumber for the company, he cannot buy from me. So I get away from him. I go to somebody else. I walk up to somebody, introduce myself. Well, what do you do? Well, I'm an architect. I'll say, well, do you own the firm? Yes, I own the firm. Okay, I've determined they can buy. What I'll do is whip out one of my cloths or my thing, go through my little demonstration, show them what I've got, then say, would it be all right for me to come by and talk to you in a couple of days? Every time they say, uh, yes, you can come by and see us. Two days later, I'm out there at their place of business to follow up. If they're not there, I leave them a note. If they don't see me, like if they were just shining me along and said, yeah, they'd see me, doesn't hurt my feelings, I leave them a note, I go away but I will call them back, I email them back, and in any chamber mixer, if I talk to 30 people, I have 30 conversations, I usually get five prospects, maybe six, I go visit all six of them, I will always make one or two sales. So when we get through with this webinar, I am gonna have my card up there. If you all have any questions, you can email me, and I will be happy to go further into these, but I, think we're good networkers because I don't get bogged down in a conversation with somebody that's not a buyer. I'm going there to get business. Uh, I'm not going there really to make friends, even though I do. I'm going there to try and uh, get contacts. Now, I tell people a lot about me. Uh, we were good at this or we're good at it. I mean, I just, I'm honest. I sell good products. I, we used to have big customers, so I'm not afraid of sharing with you what I've done. So I have a lot of testimonial marketing sheets. Like here is one, Don provides us with great service, his ideas are the best, Kay McCarthy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I get these naturally because we do a lot of rust orders. I, I, I try and deliver and people send us thank yous and I, I just copy their thank yous and I make these sheets up. Uh, you should ask your customers for referrals. Nobody's going to tell you no, but just ask them. Say, you know, it'd be all right if I write something up that you said. Half the people that I deal with say, well, Don, you know, you lie so much, you just write up whatever you want to and it's all right. I mean, they're saying that in a fun way, but I know people well enough to get that response out of them. But I have testimonial marketing sheets. So let's say if I went and talked to somebody at one of these chamber mixers, I might send one of these by email uh, the day before I went out there. Or if I went to see them or after I've gone to see them, I'll send them this in an email form. Also, I have these in six by eight postcards that I mail. Uh, the front has our logo on it. The back is nothing but the copy you're seeing here. I'll either mail those or I also drop them off when I see people. I'm happy to help you get these. There's a lot of different ways you can uh, uh, disperse them, but please tell people why you, you, they should do business with you. When I have quotes like this, it, it gives me more security calling on people. It, it sounds like I'm really tough and strong and all that, but I'm, I'm basically pretty shy. I just have to get over it and I get scared every time I make a call, so if I meet somebody that I followed up with and, and I give them this, then they go, oh, you do business with Bombay, I buy from him, whatever. It just makes me feel better about myself. 
Now let's talk about some social aspects of selling. Um, I am I'm better on LinkedIn and Facebook than I am on Twitter, and I've got a pretty strong following. I've probably got a thousand Facebook people, a thousand LinkedIn, and the way I work those is I am a groupie on those. I belong to a lot of groups. Like there's a, a promotional products group on on these. There's a uh, I know I know Sagney probably has a Facebook has a Facebook account. The little the local association down here I belong to has one. I belong to all these, and I belong to historical groups, uh, people that like cars, Route 66. I, I'm in a lot of groups, and, and I do that because I learn information about other other people that are in these groups that I that I try and call on, or people that are our customers that I, that I can you know build up my personal relationship with. I'm a publisher. Uh, it's like today I send out uh, selling tips uh, through SellPromoProducts.com, offering products. So. I did a tip for Devon on maps, offering a free um, uh, a free logo map for a free uh, for a shipper number. So I sent that out to my email list through SellPromoProducts.com, but I also included that same thing to my LinkedIn and Facebook page. I shared up on that. So I I'll, not only will I get my responses uh, for the maps through uh, through my emails off constant contact, but I'll I'll pick up two or three other ones through my LinkedIn and Facebook. Same thing you should be doing. You, you you could send that out, Mark, not not with Devin, but saying, hey, have, how about a doormat today or whatever it is. I, I'll help you with that if you need help on it. And, and I ask people to share my things to their their groups, and, and sometimes people will. If they don't, I'm not bummed out about it. If they do, fine. If not, I, they don't want to do it. I don't pressure about them. But I include a lot of photos and a lot of information about me. I mean. It's so like me going to Cuba. I've had, I posted a bunch of Cuban photos up on my Facebook account, and I mean, I think people are just enthralled the fact that I even wanted to go down there about wanting to know how I went, and 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 I've gotten a lot of a lot of contact from that because there's one of the photos of me and a cool Cuban guy. I uh, posted that uh, on my Facebook account, and this is a car that he's completely restored. These cars are all over Havana. And that's in the Revolutionary Square, back there in the backs of the buildings with Che Guevara's picture on it. I, I bet you I've had 25 people say, oh, my God, Don, tell us about you going to Cuba. Always in the back of my mind, and I won't tell you, but you know, I, I sure would like to sell you something, too. So I'm just telling you, that's how I use Facebook. That's how I use LinkedIn. Now, let's talk about mobile marketing. Uh, there are several providers on this. Uh, this is a company that I just uh, posted up their ads about making your website uh, mobile friendly. A lot of people's websites are not mobile friendly. They'll pull up fine when you when you go to the site off of a computer, but if you look if you look at them on a uh, an iPhone or an iPad, they're distorted. So uh, I mean the outlook the, it just doesn't all show up. So uh, mobile marketing is something that you need to adapt. Um, your uh, site to if you really want to get into this, into Facebook or LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. And your sharing capability will go up greatly. So that, that's the point I want to make with this. Here's, a, here's another image about how you're going to push notifications, uh, get analytics uh, on uh, who is reading uh, your information, who's visiting, etc., etc. And just another little example I'm trying to show you that uh, if you're not doing mobile marketing, if you're not doing sharing, it costs you nothing if you have built your relationships with people the way I have, you know, with my nuclear shelter or my dogs or whatever I've come up with. Let's say you're doing that with hunters or people that like boats or just whatever your interest is, then you'll have a better luck luck with your with your sharing. So that's the point I want to make on that. Now, I make a lot of YouTube videos myself. If I can make these, you can. Uh, this is one I made, good gosh, over five years ago. When I first got my iMac, and I was pretty crude at doing these, and Dooley had just come out with these color-changing cups where you fill them up with uh, water and they change color. They're like translucent, and you pour liquid in them, and they'll change to a different color. So I didn't even know how to put pictures in pictures or scrolling graphics. So what I did is I just got a cup with ice and uh, cold water, and I just held it up to the screen, and I just said, you know, Style with Don Sanders Marketing. I want to show you a really cool product. Uh, Dooley's just come out with mood cups, and I just poured the water right in the cup, right up by the camera, and it changed colors. And I said, I know this is kind of corny, but I said, you know, I wanted to show you how the cups change. Uh, love to love to sell you some of these. Let me send you some samples. And 
I got Dooley to send me all 100 samples of these. What we did is we either dropped them off at our customers or mailed them to them and then followed up with these movies and I sold several orders of them. Now, here's also is the uh, slide I made up. I followed up with by, by email. I, I called it a product of the week where I put my Don Sanders marketing up here, color changing cups and the different. So that goes with the movie. That goes with dropping the cups off. That also goes with sending a slide like this which I'm happy to help you on creating these. I, I create these through PowerPoint and then copy the slides off and then I email them. It's also something you could post on LinkedIn or whatever. Now, here's another YouTube. I made this one last week on my mini jotters. That is showing the uh, uh, jotter that I have with my logo up. I actually sat down and made this saying, you know, this is my card. Why don't you uh, make your cards? you know, useful to people where they can keep information, write information on their products inside the, the flap, et cetera, et cetera. And I just sat right there, there's in my living room, and I just filmed that, ran it off about 80 seconds. I've learned now to how to do pictures in pictures so I can crop those images and put them in those, uh, put them in those videos. Just download them off YouTube and then I send them to, uh, to my customers. Here's another one I made on American Zebras. Uh, Frios, they have these uh, can holders and, and sports related things. I, I'm not pitching them, it's just I, I wanted to make one on their sports related, related Frio. So I, here I am talking about uh, one for uh, baseball, and I just talk for like 45 or 50 seconds, and then uh, another image will come up of one about football, soccer, tennis, golf. She's got a bunch of them. <clears throat> I'm just trying to say, if I can make these, you can. And so there's the jotters again. Now, uh, here's another uh, another thing that I do where it's another slide that I've made where I'm showing you credit card then uh, uh, flash drives. Now, let's talk about price-based selling. Uh, I don't sell on price. Uh, we sell on quality. We sell on um, service. We're not the cheapest in the ra around. Some people call it looking for quotes. I'll just tell them to call somebody else. I mean, I don't do it in a rude way, but I had a friend of mine, Bob Tipton, is a real good friend of mine. He'll spend hours working on quotes and stuff like that, which we don't do. We, we try and find people that'll pay. And so people would call and say, Don, you know, we want a quote on 24 Selco watches. So I already know they've got the catalog. They've already talked to one of our competitors. And I don't want to get into a pricing war. So I just say, well, why don't you call Bob Tipton? I'll give you a price. Now, it might sound like a smart -like thing to do, but I just say, you know, I'm just joking with you about that, but I, I'll sell them to you for the catalog price, do them right, and I'll say, well, we're looking for a better price. I said, well, call Bob, and, you know, I'm just kind of halfway joking, but I, we don't do that. I don't bid. I don't fill out bidding sheets. Uh, I don't do government business, state business, because I know the customers we deal with. I'm looking at people that want to pay for, uh, for what they get. I, I don't ever show the price when anybody wants uh, – uh, ideas. Uh, I've already asked them the four questions we've talked about: how much, you know, when, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll, I'll send them three ideas. Like if, if somebody wanted tote bags, I, I already know that they want to spend six dollars. I know they need them in four days. Blah blah blah. So I will send them images of three bags and say, you know, am I going the right way here? I don't include the pricing on it because if I've done my due diligence, I, I already know what they want to spend. It, this keeps me in control. I don't feel like I've lost control of my sale. I, I, I'm not letting them take it away from me. Uh, that, that's the only way I know how to sell is to control these deals. And and we always keep the specials. Like Big puts pins on sale. Uh, 3M puts post-it notes on sale. I don't ever sell them off price. I don't ever set, send somebody something and say, oh, you know, uh, for the next 30 days you can get this for this price. We just uh, have good enough relationships with people or, or, or spend our time building that. And so I just keep the specials. That, that way I can get our profit up because I, uh, I, I just want to make the extra money. Uh, I get a lot of referrals. Uh, like I said, 25% of our business, 20% of our business is referrals. Uh, there's a couple of pictures, more of my little corny pictures, but we get a lot of referrals because I give people really good service. Uh, I'm praising people all the time. We leave voicemail messages for our customers frequently. Uh, at night, when I know they're not there, I'll just say, uh, you know, Don, it's uh, Ralph, it's Don Sanders. I, I just wanted to thank you for the t-shirt order. I uh, really appreciate your business. Yeah, give me a call. Uh, let me know if we can help you from any other thing. I do that on Saturdays and Sundays when I'm, I know they're not there. I just want them to hear my voicemail message. Uh, we contact them all the time. I'm, I'm always mailing them stuff. I'm always sending them these little pictures. 
everything's personal with me. You see that, uh, and, and and I get people to be personal with me. That that way we feel comfortable with with, with one another, and and I'm always pitching good ideas. So like next week when I go to the ASI show, um, there'll be products there. So I'll go up to suppliers and say, you know, tell me, show me what you really, what have you got that's really paramount or neat right now? And I'll even ask suppliers. Uh, I, I stay both days to show. And like I'll go up to Coaster Stone, I just know them, and they always have a bunch of samples left over. And, and I'll go up talk to Crystal Palmer and say, well, Crystal, you know, you don't want to haul all these samples back. You know, could I take 10 home with me? And she'll usually give me some samples and flyers. I take them home, and, and then I'll send those just out in the mail. They, they don't cost me anything besides the the, uh, the postage. And, and I'll go up to, you know, a bunch of suppliers hour before the show is over and just say, well, you know, we, we let me have those samples. They usually do. I, I do a lot of prospecting. We're always networking. I'm doing a lot of mailing programs. Back to our referrals, where we're getting 20, 25% of your business. Now, I want to talk to you about getting big customers. You can't get big customers away from the person they're already buying from by just walking in businesses or just trying to call people on appointments. They're, they're going to blow you off. Uh, people on these big hospitals, they know what they're doing personnel directors, uh, management, uh, et cetera, et cetera, financial people, whatever you want to call them. What I do is we use students to call. Uh, call prospects and we find out the marketing directors, personnel directors, and we make our own list. I don't ever buy lists. Lists that you buy, 30% of them are already the names are wrong and the names are misspelled. You want to not sell somebody, you send a flyer or something to me and, and you call me Don, D-A-W-N instead of D-O-N and I'm going to think, you know, you're not paying much attention to me so I'm not going to buy from you. So I have students, I pay by the hour, uh, high school students, college students are easy to get through job banks uh, at schools. I have them call, build lists up, build lists up for me, I get products, we print flyers, and I'm going to show you some of those here in a minute that we mail consecutively for three weeks. I'll send them a flyer, a product, uh, interns do all that for us. Then on the fourth week, I'll even have the intern call the person and say, uh, you know, Don's been sending you these uh, Badger tractors, whatever. He'd love to come over and see you. And about one out of ten you're able to connect with. Uh, then the, the nine that I haven't, I'll wait and do my Saturday or Sunday deal where I'll leave them a message, and they'll usually one will call back. Then I'll email images, fail. Uh, mail and phone again. There's my workforce. That's pretty blurry, but those are students. I pay them by the hour, 12, 15 bucks an hour. I'll pay some 20 that are good on the phone. They, they do this and take the work off of me. Uh, we, we, we started doing uh, card programs years ago. Uh, here's a sample of one I've got. <coughs> I did for a distributor up in Colorado. Uh, it's a duplicate of one that I did for Don Sanders Marketing where we had, would find <coughs> Excuse me, I got a call. Uh, like we found the 25 largest funeral homes in Dallas. We called and found the funeral director and the marketing director's name out, and so we printed these three-part mailer cards up uh, that fold into themselves. Uh, would hand address them and send them. If you return the card, you got a three and a half gallon popcorn tin. Uh, I'd send 25 of these, one each to 25 funeral directors uh, on Monday usually get back one or two in a couple of days. Uh, the next Monday we had 23, let's say, who didn't respond. We'd mail them again. I'd get back another one. Had 22 have not, who had not responded, I'd mail again. I'd get back another one. So if I mailed uh, 25 funeral homes, three or four of these cards, I'd get back about four. And that's how we were, uh, how we were getting our prospects. I, I was mailing couple of hundred cards a week, uh, the mail funeral homes, uh, travel agents, uh, mortgage companies, I didn't care who, who it was. We were all trucking companies, we were always building lists, we were always mailing. Now here's another one I did back when 4G flash drives got to be popular. Here's one I helped uh, a Vernon salesman with, and I, I did the same thing where we sent this out and if you responded, I'd give you a 4G flash drive. Now I got about 10% response on this, everybody was so uh, so mercenary, man, they wanted that free flash drive, and they were sending those cards back like crazy, and we, we did not send the, the drive back to them. We actually would go out to their place of business and uh, just drop by there, and if there was security or stuff like that we couldn't get, get to, um, then I would uh, call and try to get the person's email, email them a time when we could come, et cetera, et cetera, and I, I, we worked these card programs re religiously. Now, 
here's a, a, a lens cleaning cloth that I had uh, back when our logo was a drive-in movie theater screen. I, I did a film for PBS called Drive-In Movie Memories, a couple of books on that, and we just got into the drive-in, so I made our logo that, and, and everybody we talked to, uh, we talked to about drive-ins, everybody loved to chat about it, so we made that logo, and there's the lens cleaning cloth we were using then, and then there is a lens cleaning cloth um, a flyer that Cloth Promotions created for me. So what I would do, like on the mailing program I just talked to you about, let's say we want to we want to sell St. Joseph Hospital in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, what we would do is I would have found out the marketing director, materials management director, personnel director, and I would have accurate names of them. And my intern would take a flyer, uh, fold up one of those cloths inside this flyer, and just mail it to them on a Monday and then do nothing. And then the next Monday, they'd mail them another one and do nothing. The next Monday, they would mail them another one and do nothing. Then on the fourth week, I would either call or they would call and, you know, about one out of ten would say, well, you know, that, that product is interesting or why are you sending us that stuff? And, and that's all I'm looking for is just somebody to pay me a little attention. That's the only way I know how to tell you to get into these big accounts is take these cool products and just mail it religiously and follow up. Because if you just show up there, you're not going to get them. You've either got to mail them or you've got to meet them at one of these events. Now, like here's another product. We, we had a lot of custom flyers. Here's one that American Greenwood does for us. They have these RFID blocking cards uh, that you can stick these on your cell phones, put a credit card in them if you want to not to carry your bill phone when you go out at night. American Greenwood made these flyers up for me, so I went to their uh, booth um, at the uh, PBA All Las Vegas show, and I took home about 50 of these. That they, uh, I said, well, Ed, Ed Sokolowski, I was like, I said, well, give me those. I'm, you know, I'll mail them. And so we mail these, same kind of pitch that I was telling you. Then I also made this up uh, in an email form, which is what that is, and, and email that to somebody. You know, Coaster Stone, I, I told you about getting the Coaster Stone samples. Well, here's a flyer they made up for us, same pitch, you know, like we did on the lens cleaning cloths or I did on the RFID blockers. Just mail this with a sample of a coaster, uh, you know, three or four weeks in a row, and then go there or, or make the follow-up call. I, I don't know how else to, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know how else to tell you how to get those, account, those accounts. Now, we're getting towards the end, so let me go through these, uh, these recipes quickly. I, we try to impress buyers. We have something to say. I don't leave blank messages like Joe call me back. It'd be Joe, it's Don Sanders, I'm calling you. Uh, you know, we talked about those hats. If we're going to get them delivered by next, uh, in two weeks, I need the artwork today. Uh, that's setting deadlines. I slide dial people. Uh, this phone number down here at the screen, you can call that number. It will ask you to, you, you'll just do a little ad for McDonald's or a little, some company, and uh, then you enter that number, you enter the number you're calling, and it'll go directly to, the person's voicemail on their cell phone. I do this because a lot of times I don't want to talk to people. I'm kind of shy, but I do want to leave them a message. I sell a lot of products where price is not an issue. These American Made Lens Cleaning Cloths are one. I sell a lot of those to retirement homes. Here's a product. Uh, I sell a lot of vets. Dooley has pet feeding cups, which I came up with this idea because the vet told me my dogs were fat. I said, well, give me a cup. I can measure uh, how much food I give them. So this is a flyer I made up uh, with email, leave with the cups. Uh, we sell a lot of hospitals back in the day. Um, Navarra, I'm, just, I'm not pitching Navarra, but they make antimicrobial badger tractors. Every hospital has badger tractors, but I guarantee you about 40% of them do not have antimicrobial, which can keep, they don't kill germs, they keep germs from being spread from one surface to another. You take these badges, make up a flyer, you mail those repetitively, just like I told you, you'll get some action with healthcare people. Security is a big deal. This is a, miss, a, a whistle from Devara. You blow this thing, it'll scare the death out of you. There's a lot of female sexual assault on college campuses. I would call these, I would sell these to student housing at colleges. Every female at a college should have this to carry with them at night. You blow this whistle, it'll blow your earrings out. Ear, not ear rings, your uh, ear, whatever you call it, blow your ears out. That is really cool product. It, on the last slide, I'll show you my email. If you want one of these, I can get one to Bart sent you. I, I, I swear you should be selling these to all schools. I sell a lot of doormats. Uh, we get full price on doormats. I sell a lot of those to retirement homes. 
Uh, all hospitals have doormats. If you're not selling mats, you're, you're missing the boat. We sell a lot of custom products. That's how we cut down on price shoppers on these lapel pins I'm trying to show you. Barrington does those. There's a lot of lapel pin companies. I, I do custom shapes. That way I can't get shopped. Quickie, I'm not pushing Quickie, but like instead of selling normal Quickie products, we do custom shapes, custom colors. That way we get a lot of reorders. I, I do a lot of name badge business. Back in the day with hospitals, we would get four and 5,000 piece reorders. I could not have sold the amount we did if we weren't getting referrals and reorders. I sold a lot of name badges. We do a lot of badge programs. Uh, ID Line's a really good company. They do a badge re release program. You pay for the badges up front. Customer sends you the personalizations. You send them to, you enter them electronically through uh, ID Line's badge release program. Uh, you've got to be selling badges if you're going to get your, your, uh, your volume up. Now, understanding the Affordable Care Act. Uh, everybody's insurance is going up. Uh, if you want to email me after this, uh, Fine has got a whole program on selling affordable care. Uh, you need to get with your customers. You need to start doing health and wellness programs for them. This is a wellness tip magnet. Uh, there's a magnet company that has a whole series of wellness tip magnets. They need to be imprinted with a company logo. They give there to the employees for to kick off no smoking. Uh, campaigns, etc. If, if you're not talking to your customer about wellness products, man, I'm telling you, you're way behind the curve. Paper products, big wellness item for hospitals. Here's a pill retractor from, uh, I believe Molnar has that. Reflectix has these reflective uh, uh, armbands you wear at night. Safety's big with uh, health and wellness programs. You get whacked at night out walking a dog or, or something, you're going to have a big health care bill. Company you work for is not going to be happy about it. You've got to be selling wellness programs. Now, my last slide here before my contact slide is we fire a lot of customers. Hard to do. True story, the Bob Bay Company was our biggest customer for 13 years. I sold them over $200,000 a year. I got sick of the way they were dealing with me, and I told the lady I was dealing with I was going to stop calling her, calling on her. They had bought, uh, I worked on an apron deal for 3,000 custom aprons, American-made aprons. I worked on this for a year. I paid for the samples. I did the marketing test. They were going to place an order for 3,000. They contact, faxed me the order, and then about four hours later, she called and wanted me to call her back, and I called her back, and I'd had maybe two gin and tonics. I should, probably shouldn't tell you that. But she said, Don, you know what? I, you're going to have to sharpen your pencil on those aprons. I said, Kay, you've already seen the purchase order. She said, Steve, my boss's neighbor has just got in the promotional products business and says he can get the aprons cheaper than you. And I said, well, maybe he can. I said, but is his an American-made apron? Is it stitched this way? She goes, well, he doesn't seem to care about that. He's just looking for price. I knew right then. All the good work I had done with them was over. All they were going to do was beat me up. I said, okay, not going to, you know, I'm just going to stop calling on you. And I, it made me sick that night because I said that to her. The next day, I was just jittery. But you know what? It turned out for the best because Bombay went bankrupt two years later, and I did not end up being held the bag like maybe that guy's neighbor did. I hope he did. He deserved it. But I had the guts to walk away from that. Best thing I'd ever done, because I'll bet you when they declared bankruptcy, there was somebody like me who ended up owing a lot of money. Now, with that said, there is my phone number. There is my email, donatselfpromoproducts.com, and my website. I'm not pushing this. But if you'd like to have any of the samples that I have talked to you about, I can get them for you at no charge. Happy to do that. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help you. If you ever have a problem, an issue with anything, I'm here to help you, suppliers. But as on my website, I do get paid to do this. I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to thank you. I've talked utterly as fast as I could. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any comments, I'm all ears. Please let me know. And again, I want to thank you for listening, and I really appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, Don. Um, we do have a few questions here that people um, have typed out for us. Okay. Do you sure. have time for that? Sure. I okay. do. Sure. Um, Peter McFarland has two questions, and he wants one is what's the best thing to do, say, or ask prospect customers to get promotional product orders 
And also his other question is, uh, do you develop your own flyers uh, a lot or do a lot of self promos? I think you've answered so, quite a few of these along the way, but I'm not sure if you need to be refreshed or. Well, on the on the self promotion flyers, I like on uh, those slides that I showed you. I make those myself. Like I'll take a slide and I'll you know I insert my logo and a, a picture of the product and that, those ones that we email. I uh, I am making those myself. Now the one I showed you, like from Coaster Stone, American Greenwood, I've got them from Warwick. I've got them from GMG Pen. When I go to these shows, uh, I I just go up to them and say, listen, you know, do you have some self promotion flyers? And 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 I don't expect them to print them for me. What they do is I'll I will uh, have my logo on my uh, Wi-Fi or whatever, and I will just send it to them. I'll say, well, what, what's your art department address? And I'll just send it to them right then. Like when I go to ASI Chicago, I will do that. And then what they do is they create the image for me and then email it back to me. And then I put that on a disk and I'll go up to Office Depot and we'll run 100 copies of that in color. And mm -hmm. I've also got them for Crystal D on awards. I've got about nine or ten different ones. And we mail those with products from time to time. And then I also send those when I send out invoices. I never email invoices. I don't do that. I know that's kind of behind the time. But we actually still mail our invoices. And the reason I do that is I'll always uh, put a couple of those flyers in there with that invoice. This gives me another touch. I don't know if they're ever going to read them or not, but it makes me feel like I'm doing a better, better job. And as far as asking people about what to ask about be, buying promotional products, I just ask people if they ever buy anything with their name on it. I, I don't say pro, sell promotional products. I don't tell people I'm in the promotional products business. Uh, if people ask me what I do, I own a marketing company because I, I do do marketing. 99% uh, of our business is promotional products, but I've made a lot of money doing safety programs, uh, wellness programs. We, we didn't talk too much about wellness. Maybe we could do another webinar on that or safety programs, but I just tell people I'm in the marketing business and I can help you with your promotional items, artwork, etc. Because I've got other people that can do that, but I just ask people, you know, do you ever buy anything with your name on it? And that's it's just about as common of a phrase that I can do. So that, that's the best answers I can give to those two. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, another question from John Estes, Does, uh, do you handle people viewing your ideas and taking them to a different distributor? How, how, do, what, how do I handle it or what, what was, what was? I, I guess, yeah, her question is how, how would you handle that or how do you handle it? I go chase them down and be mean to them. I, I, don't, <laughs> deal with, I, I don't deal with people that would do that. I mm -hmm. not deal with individuals that are not honest, and that's the reason that I, I I build my personal relationships with people. That's why people know me. They know that I am an honest person who will do you right, and I expect you to do me right in return. And I usually don't have people shop our ideas. If they do, I get away from them. I don't ever want to see them again. And I will take the time fretting about it or trying to, you know, work it back right, looking for somebody else. But I, I've, all, I've already asked the person the four questions we talked about, how much, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I know, and, and, and I deal with people. I guess the best example is my former neighbor is my really only one big customer I have left. Warren uh, is the meeting planner for a big company. He's probably got 10 promotional products people a week over there calling on him. And he can always buy stuff cheaper. But he depends on me because he's a pants on fire guy. It's always last minute with him. Well, he knows that he can depend on me. He doesn't care what the price is. I like him because he will buy from me because we've delivered time in and time again. That's the kind of people I look for. I'm not saying that they're everybody's like that because they're not, but I would advise that person to try and know, let people know that she expects them to do business with them. And there's no way to sue people or worry about it. If it happens to you, just grin and bear it, and then don't try and call on somebody like that again. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, I hope Rosenberg uh, has a concern. Um, what if your client is a bank and the price is very important to them? You know that they are com that you're competing with four other vendors. Um, what do you do? How do you handle that relationship? How do you keep that good relationship? With with you, I'm trying to sell that person. Well, I would walk away from that that deal. I, I when it, just like my Bombay thing. Uh, I did a lot of work for them, and Bombay terrorized me pretty badly because they were always last minute. Uh, they were always changing delivery dates on us. I worked really hard for them, and I expected to get paid. And when she did me that way on the aprons, I knew right then we were going nowhere but down on that. And so I just took the time that I would de dealing with Kay. You know, it wasn't Kay. She was my dear friend. It was her boss. And I went out and, and, and just looked for other people. And so from my perspective, I would walk away from deals like that because when you're getting down to making 15 or 20, 25% on orders, I don't want that business. I'm losing money on business at that, at, at that rate because we, we, we try and do this in a meaningful, good way. And, and I just get away from that. And, and some people don't. They, 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 and, and I don't blame people for not getting away from it. You want to make the sales, but at a point, I've just got to say, you know, I, I just can't sell you any lower. And then I start questioning the quality of the cheaper product. You know, is your product American made? Mine is. Is yours <coughs> made with uh, uh, proper inks? And when you start asking them those questions, they usually don't know. I don't know. I mean, I had a nail file deal the other day I was going to lose. I, had, I was using TrueBite, and uh, for, for one of my customers, the, those nail files cost me a dollar ten. I was selling them for a dollar ninety-two, and uh, my customer called me and said, "No, we need to reorder our nail files, but you need to sharpen your pencil." I knew right then somebody had been over there with a cheaper nail file, so I went to see Joel, and I looked at him, and he showed me the file, and I said, "Joel, how much are you gonna sell you that file for?" And he said, "A dollar." I said, "Joel, I'll I'll sell you that file for fifty cents." I said, she's overcharging you at a dollar. He said, why? I said, well, that, that nail file is made in China. I said, it's not made with USDA inks. And I said, if your clients are filing their fingernails and they have a cut in their cuticle and that ink gets in their, in their skin, it'll rot their finger off. And I just started telling him all these horror stories. He said, shut up, Don. Don't talk to me anymore about this. I'll never buy from anybody else. I didn't know that it was a different file. I said, yes, Joel, that's a different file. And this guy I've dealt with for seven years is smart, but he, I was selling him TrueBytes, American-made, full-color files. I mean, I'm not pushing TrueByte, but that's the file that I want to sell. And if somebody comes over with a cheap one, I just start questioning, well, what's it made of? And the customer every time will say, Don, I don't know. I don't know. I never ask them. Because people that sell cheap, they don't know either, and they're just selling stuff. I, I just... It, it, nothing upsets me worse than people trying to outsell innocent good people with junk and then acting like it's the same thing. I mean, it's like on coffee mugs. I, I had somebody try and beat me on a coffee mug. I'm sorry I'm getting wound up on this, but I, I, we used to use coffee, lose coffee mug deals. I, I wouldn't sell a coffee mug less than a buck ninety nine. Then people start selling coffee mugs for ninety nine cents. I said I'm not going to sell you those. The handles fall off of them. Well, what do you mean, Don? I said, well, they're cheap mugs. I said, do you want your customer to pick up the coffee and the handle break off and it, you know, drop on the desk and, and uh, spill coffee all over? They'll go, oh, is there a difference? I go, yeah. Why do you think mine's about 99? I've gotten to where I'm really good at shutting that down by just calling them on it and saying, tell me, what do you know about what you're buying? And every time they don't know. And that's how I pull them back. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Paul Steinberg wants to know, uh, or can you please explain the slide dial? The slide dial, I came upon that because I'm shy. And I talk a good game, and I just have to. I make a living at this. But I don't want to talk to people. My heart rate gets up. My heart races. And it's just like fraud. there's a big bank here in Texas. I'm trying to start selling. I'm in Dallas. They're in San Antonio. Well, I met the girl not girl, the marketing director two weeks ago. I have mailed her five days in a row different products, 
Well, I don't want to get her. I don't want to talk to her. So I will slide dial her tonight. I will dial that number. It'll say, please enter the number the person will slide dial. I will enter the name of the, her cell phone number, knowing it'll go directly to her cell phone. I know she can't answer. It is a service that's free. You just have to listen to like a little 10 second commercial for Sprint or Verizon or whatever. Or you can pay them 10 bucks a month. You don't have to listen to the commercials. But I'm shy. And so I know I've got her voicemail. I'll say, you know, June, it's Don Sanders. I want to sell you something so badly. Would you please email me your logo so I can do some virtuals or will you call me back? And I enjoyed meeting you so much. I hope your open house was good and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. I want to say that message to her. If, if she answers, I talk too much. I know that. And I'll start stammering. So I use slide dial to deliver messages because she's either going to be a buyer in me, she's either interested because I've been mailing the stuff and she's going to call me back or she's going to blow me off. And I'd rather have her blow me off that way than tell me on the phone. So that, I mean, that's what I use slide dial for. I use it to leave specific messages that I want people to listen to. Okay. Thanks. Um... Hope Rothenberg, welcome. Oh no, I answered her. Right. She's interested in those um, whistles. I told, I informed her that it was Devara that you got those whistles yes. from. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, any tips for one person no. companies trying Pardon? to do it all? Do what? Uh, any tips for a one person company who's trying to do it all? A, a one person company can't do it all. Um, when we sold stuff, we have to have help. And I've used students for 20 years. And I get high school students. They can work for home after school or used to be. We office out of our home across from SMU. We had a pretty big house. I had two rooms upstairs made into offices. I had somebody in our house from 1 to 5 every day. And they uh, searched made our list, and I, I like to hire uh, females. I didn't like men, because I know it's gross to say, but the females, they worked better if they were uh, hung over or tired. They'd come to work, wouldn't call me and say, no, I got something else to do. So I hired junior and senior girls from sororities who needed things on their resume to show that they had been trying to work and they were in marketing and they did our research. They uh, helped me with our mailers, built our list. They addressed the cards. I had them making follow-up calls. And some of them, whose fathers were salespeople, like one lady worked for us. Her dad owned all the car dealerships in Virginia. She's pretty outgoing. I could, I could tell Larson, Larson, call them all today. And she'd call all 50 of her big customers, and she'd just say, you know, I'm calling you because Don wants me to call you. I don't even know what I'm calling you for, but I'm calling because Don wants to see if you need to buy anything. That's exactly what she'd say. And I'd come back to the office. She'd call all 50 of them. She'd say, Don, Bombay needs new name badges. Uh, the Church Convention Bureau needs you to look at this and blah, blah, blah. And I was out making calls and closing deals, and they were helping with their work. So you've got to have some kind of help. If you're going to do it by yourself, there's only so much you could sell, and, and, and you're not going to be able to sell any more than that. Okay. Um, thank you. I think that's pretty much in, um, it for today. Okay. Um, and, uh, again, Don, I thank you so much for doing this um, for us again. Great. Uh, well received from everyone. On our uh, last webinar. I'm sorry I get so wound up on these things. It oh, just, okay. You're passionate about it. That's good. Well, it bothers me because I, I hate to see people go work at this and do it, and then somebody go come up and say, oh, well, I do the same thing for you cheaper, and it's not. Uh, you know, it's just not. And, uh, and people buying online, I don't mind people buying online. I mean, I buy off Amazon.com all the time, but I'm buying a piece of Delsey luggage. So... The Delsey luggage I buy online and the one I buy at the department store is the same piece, but going and buying a thousand magnets that could be printed somewhere that are not 
and bad ink on that's not the same as mine magnets from magnet ink or quickie or whoever it is and I just don't like I, I don't like people that, that get their feelings hurt by that so mm -hmm. all right Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and for everyone who's attended, thank you also very much for joining us, for taking out uh, an hour of your day. Um, again, this webinar and all of our monthly webinars are recorded, and they have been uploaded to our YouTube channel. And uh, we would like for you to give us any feedback that you have. Um, if you need to get in touch with Don, his contact information is right there, don at cellpromoproducts.com. Um, feel free to contact me as well for any questions you may have, uh, Rocio, R-O-C-I-O, at sagni.org. Again, thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon and a great weekend. And Don, again, thank you. You're more than welcome. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye.